have you. <laughs> if you have Bibles and need a Bible, raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to hand you one. Let's stand and read the word of God today. It starts in Luke chapter 15, 8 through 10. Luke chapter 15, 8 through 10. all there? The parable of the lost coin. Suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she light a lamp, sweep the house, and ser search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice, rejoice with me. I have found my coin in the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before you this evening to give you glory and honor. I ask you, Lord, to use me as a vessel, as an instrument, Lord, to bring the word forward tonight. For those who need words of encouragement, for those who may need love, for those who just need compassion or strength for today strength for tomorrow. Lord, use us. Bless each and every one here, Lord. Open their ears, their heart, Lord, that they can receive what you have prepared for them. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Don't worry. Be happy. How many of us worry? Yet the Bible tells us, don't worry about the little things. Be happy. Tonight, we're going to be talking about worrying. So many of us worry about the littlest things, things that just don't go right in our lives, things that happen in our lives that we, we just overwhelm sometimes with things. I want to give you a little story because a lot of us get mad sometimes when we worry or we're, we have an appointment, and we're rushing to get to this appointment. And as we're going... It's like the traffic today on the highway. It just ain't moving. There's been an accident or a little old lady sitting in front of you, driving, driving as slow as she can go. The speed limit's 35 and she's going 10 miles an hour, maybe 12 miles an hour. And you're going, oh God, help this lady, get this lady out. We think it's grandma, it's grandpa. Who in the world would be driving that slow? And as you pass her and you give it gas, somebody cuts you off almost runs you all, all over. Sometimes we're not worried of the things around us and things happen. Sometimes we're worried about how we're going to pay the bills, the rent, the mortgages. Sometimes we just can't see light at the end of the tunnel. But you know what? God is so good. He helps us even in our times of worries. I have a little situation I want to say tonight. and My wife is probably going to kill me. But she, every time I preach, I say something about what happens in our family, in our children. But the other day, we had a house full of people. And you know, when we have parties or group gatherings at our houses, it's 30, 40, it's a lot of people. Anyhow, everybody started to leave one by one. We started picking up stuff. And as we gather and everybody leaves, and we're, the wife comes up to me, she says, where did you put the remote? You had it last. Honey, I didn't have it last. You had the remote. What, what are you worried about a remote? The remote she got on her knees, she pulled out a flashlight, she looked under the couches, she looked everywhere and she still threatened me. You had it last. Um, so I didn't have it last. And she continues to look in a panic motion in fear and saying, oh God, bring out the remote. My son drives up, and my wife's underneath the couch with a flashlight, and he says, is this what you're looking for? My granddaughter took it home with her. <laughs> she took it home with her, and for 30 to 45 minutes, we were going crazy trying to turn off the TV. Couldn't find the remote, I just said, I'll plug it. Sometimes our heads go to mind when we lose a little object. This lady lost two coins. In a the story about the coins. I don't know how many of you have ever lost your keys. 
something valuable, your wallet. You misplace something and you go into a panic mode. You're just hysterics and can't find it. Well, before I came to church, I lost something valuable. I said, oh, Lord, it's in your hands. I'll deal with it later. This message is don't worry, be happy, and it's going to be part of the service. I will find it, the lost coin. Sooner or later, it'll come out. But as we go, God gives us the breath of life, and we need to honor him every day, regardless of our situations, our worries, our headaches, our problems. We need to turn everything over to God. Every morning when I come to prayer, and I like to start my day with prayer, I ask God, please, Put shoes of righteousness on me today. That I walk the path of righteousness to honor you and to give you glory. I want to start my morning by thanking him for another day of life and tell him, please, Lord, help me. Help me through this day. Because God gives us choices. When we honor him, when we do things for God and for our brothers and sisters, that thing that goes, the circle of life, what goes around comes around. The more good you do, and you do good to others, it someday will come back to help you in your hour of need. We, we not all can always rejoice and be happy because we go through valleys, hills. We go through ups and downs with our families, our children, our loved ones, and sometimes even our neighbors. It's difficult. Life isn't a bowl of cherries. It has a lot of pits in it. So I pray that you make godly choices in your life. That you, each morning that you rise and shine and ask him, Lord, help me walk that narrow path, Lord, that I would honor you today. That I could bring happiness and joy and encouragement to others. Because sometimes we all sin. And sin is like a credit card. You're welcome to use it. You can, it allows you to max out as much sin as you want. You can get careless, but it's going to be rough to pay it back. Yeah, God can forgive you, but don't play with him. He'll come to a point that he loves you, and he cares, and he'll forgive you, and he'll forgive you again, and he'll forgive you again. Regardless how many times we err, he'll forgive you. But there may come a time he says, hey, I've done all I can do. We do that to our children. We tell them, hey, I've helped you. I can't keep giving you money. I can't be paying your mortgage. I can't be buying you cars. You wreck it, you buy the next one. We can't just keep giving. We have to let people learn. Learn people to build their self-esteem. Sometimes sin brings worries and fears and even death where we will be judged after we die in this earth. We will be judged, and the living and the dead will be judged someday. But you know what? Don't worry. Be happy. That remote will come out again. That last item that you lost, I've lost my keys, and I carry a lot of keys. Man, do I carry keys. I've only lost them once. But to backtrack, to find them, it took me a whole day. I mean, sometimes we don't understand how careless we are, but sometimes we can lose our salvation just much the same way. Sometimes we can go too far and, and think that everything's going to be all right and God will forgive me. Don't lose your salvation over sin. Sin is not worth what you think it's worth. The Bible says, what shall it profit if a man gain the whole world but lose his own soul? You could win the lotto. You could win lots of money. But to lose your soul, there's no price that could be paid on your soul. So by this, the fear, Sunday morning I talked about a scripture in Proverbs 9.10. In closing, I said, this reads like this as they bring it up. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and wisdom is to depart from all evil. So that was my notes. This is how it reads. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. We need to fear God. As a child, I feared my parents. My parents were very strict. 
they made me work and always work. I heard of a story this, this week of how a mom raised her children to be compassionate, to have mercy, to love their neighbors. And the youngest ones had a, a little remark to say, yeah, my mom made me show mercy, compassion, and help the neighbors. And every time they needed their weeds pulled, guess who she picked? The youngest son, Quito, cleaned their yard. Not so much for the money, help thy neighbor clean their yard. And that was such a touching moment because this was the a, a funeral service. They were talking about their mother and what reminded of what their mother meant to them. And when this, this came to illustration that mother had mercy and love for her neighbors, her friends, yet her, she would put her children in place, things she couldn't do for them to take care of and do. So the Bible, we are to shun and to stay away from all evil. Anything that lures us to do evil or wickedness, we must stay completely away from sin as a child of God. So don't worry. Be happy because God is going to meet your needs. I tell you today, Jesus is saying to you, don't worry, be happy, be content where you're at. Turn your troubles and worries to God. He's willing to help you, to guide you, because he loves you. So many uncertainties out there because we're living in the last days. There will come a day that we won't be able to sit in church. You thought the time of COVID was difficult, being isolated? In the end times, you won't be able to sit in church. The government is going to tell you what you can do and what you can't do. We were upset because they told us we had to wear masks, that we had to stay home and stay confined. But in the end days, Lord, have mercy for those who go through tribulation. I was a little distant during the time of COVID because you couldn't go to travel, you couldn't go to work. In some instances, you couldn't even buy stuff with cash. There was times I went to, to buy stamps or postage or, or a money order, and they said, debit or credit? Debit or credit? No cash? Debit or credit? They're molding us for the end times. It will be one money currency, one money currency over, over worldwide, and we're not understanding that they're molding us. They're shaping us to what things are going to happen. I have a question that 50 years ago, I used to watch a famous TV show called Star Trek. In Star Trek, they had the communicators, the flip-flop phones, and they would say, beam me up, Scotty, beam me up. Cell phones have taken control of our lives like we never knew they would. They know exactly where you're at. They know where you've been. Your smartphones will even ask you to do a survey because you were here or you were there. It's amazing how much the cell phones are controlling our lives. They can remember places we've been to I can't remember what I did yesterday or where I was, much less last year or the year before. These cell phones are controlling our lives and gathering lots of information. In my case, my, my cell phone has a camera lens on both sides. Did you know that the government, Google, and advertising agencies are actually taking snapshots of our faces from time to time to see what kind of mood you're in? How you woke up that morning with babas hanging out the side, your hair like this, and your eye kind of half spread up, your makeup, Lord knows have mercy on us. Man, some of the pictures if they saw, took of me it could have my hair this way and me and my shortness, I, I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> Where they could be taking. With that said, a lot of us take the cell phones into the restroom anymore. I be careful what you do in the bathroom with a cell phone. Don't drop it. Don't stand up with it. Don't point it in the wrong direction because Lord knows who's watching. And some have even dropped it down the toilet. 
So be careful with your cell phones in the bathroom. I go back to another little story. When I was a kid, I used to watch a cartoon called The Jetsons. How many remember The Jetsons? Oh boy, a lot of us do. They would pull this TV screen down to communicate live with someone else. We can do that with our phones now. We could Zoom, we could do FaceTime, we can do a lot of things by a click of a button. That was 50 years plus ago. They were predicting the future. You know what the Bible has predicted the future many, many, many years ago. The prophecies that are unfolding in these end days, there's a few still to come. God have mercy that we're not in those days. That when he comes, that he finds us worthy to enter the kingdom of God. God is good, but we have to be righteous and stand in his path on a daily way. The, the smartphones can actually have the ability to record everything we do. Everything. They can listen to us. If, if, if the government really wanted, they could click the phone in your pocket and listen to your conversations. They could know where you're at. You know, I'm not to worry about what the government's doing. Today I say, don't worry, be happy. But I say, I would worry what God is seeing you do. What is God? I mean, everything else is being recorded here. And you walk around like, oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. They can see me. They can listen to me. They, can I, they see my pictures. They store the pictures in a the cloud. They store everything. How much more do you think God is storing about your life? He knows every hair on your head. And sometimes we want to play, oh, Santitos. Well, I, I can, I'll just do it this one time. God will forgive me. Oh, one beer, one joint, a little bit of gossip. God will forgive me. You know, God's recording everything. We think digital stuff can record now. Imagine how God is recording our life. That there'll come a day he's going to open the book of life and he's going to show you what your life was really about. I would be worried. I would be afraid in a fear of what God is going to see about my life. I pray that he would have thrown all my past sins, as he says, into the deepest part of the ocean. And that he would say, welcome me in thy faithful servant, been bought by the blood of Jesus, enter in. How many are you going to make it? How many have been playing church? How many have been playing with sin? God have mercy on us. It's time that we deal with this time of COVID. It was so overwhelming. We get into every side of electronic devices. We got onto our TVs. We stayed home. And now... There's people afraid to come back to church. Oh, they go to Walmart, they go to places, they go to malls, but they're afraid of church. The churches should be bursting at the seams and we need to disciple and teach others that we need to invite them to church, bring them in. Who would ever imagine that Zoom would be like a conference meeting, like the Jetsons, oh, we, a group of us can actually conference a whole meeting. Yet, we're not aware that what's in the background. I've talked to some teachers. I've talked to other people who Zoom a lot in meetings. And the things that happen in the background are unbelievable. Some are, I mean, they, they've actually pierced into your home. Where grandmas are, are, are don't know what's going on, grandparents don't know what's going on. Brothers and sisters are running around doing crazy things. The words of crazy is probably not unbelievable, but using our iPads and computers, they're recording us. I would imagine if God would ever pull up everything that was on Zoom and says, 
What was happening? Where were you? Were you were, were you in a bar? Were you living in sin? Were you doing things that you shouldn't have been doing? God, have mercy on us. That we can say, Lord, through your grace, through your mercy, I have forgiveness. And I can continue serving you with all my heart. Please, erase my past. Erase anything on Zoom, on multimedia, on social media, anywhere my life might be, that I could serve you. Cameras are everywhere, in businesses, in governments, at homes. Even here at church, we have cameras. And we think these cameras are here to help us, to be safe, to protect us. But you know what? God has a camera on your life. He's recording everything you do. And you're not going to be like standing in front of a local judge and say, I don't do it. You're not going to be able to lie to God. To Jesus Christ, when he comes judgment day, he pulls out the book of life. And he tries to explain, were you here? Did you do this? Did you sin and not ask for forgiveness? Imagine, we think that we have lots of enhanced digital equipment, toys, when God has the best. He records everything. And I pray he finds good things in us. I pray that we've done our discipleship, that we've been praying, that we've been ministering, that we've been encouraging, that we've been loving one another. Because it's going to get to a time that he's going to ask, why should I let you in? He might say, I don't know you. And that's because we played with sin. Lord, help us. Let us take control of everything we have because we have the ability to change things we do. We have the ability and to take control of our emotions, to t- the ability to change and to learn and to help encourage others our tongue is a two-edged sword we can pronounce blessings or we can pronounce curses it's up to us to do godly things worry cannot cure you or heal you from sickness disease cancer or even death why worry about those things God's in control. Worrying about problems won't make them go away. Worrying about your kids, your family neighbors, your members, your neighbors, it won't change. Worries cannot change the past, and it can't control the future. Prayer can. When you get with God and say, God, I turn my my burdens to you. They're in your hands. He can relieve all the stress from your life. But so many of us like to worry. We need to get rid of this disease called worry out of our lives. We need to trust God. Quit dealing with worries or the what ifs. Worries can ruin your life. Prayers can change. Prayers can help. Prayers for others. How many of you would like to live a satisfied life knowing when you die our Lord and Savior would call you by name and welcome you into his presence saying welcome in thy faithful servant. As a little kid I used to go to church. My grandma would take me to church. Oh I love to go to children's church. I love to go to church because grandma always had treats. She always had cookies. She always had something for us. And there was this little song. I didn't sing the first song because I don't like to sing. But I remember this song as a child. And it went something like this. Oh, when the saints go marching on. Oh, when the saints go marching on. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching on. Come on, let's sing it with me. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number, oh, when the saints go marching in. I mean, 
As a child, there's songs that we remember and we don't forget. Those things when you leave, sometimes I've left church Sunday mornings after worship and praise after church, and a tune still stays in my head. I, that, it's that worship and praise, that the adoration to give it, God, Lord, I'm here, but I want to march in that number when they call the numbers. I want to be in that rapture. I want to be part of the family because God is good. But again, I tell you, be happy. And don't worry, everything's God has under control. Be, it may be a new job you're thinking of or a daily routine that you have to change. The stress sometimes of even going to the doctor. Every time I go to the doctor, my blood pressure goes up. It looks like my weight does too. <laughs> he tells me everything negative. I don't like to go to doctors. He says, your C1 level's high, your weight's high, your blood pressure's high. Do something about it. And I said, Doc, I'm trying, but you shouldn't make me nervous. I don't like going to doctors. I don't like doing new jobs because there's always a fear. But I have to say, don't worry. Be happy. And we have to work on our physical life as much as our spiritual life. One thing that goes out of balance, I don't care if it's your physical health or your life, it messes with your spiritual life. It messes with your family. You have to have an equal balance in your life, but throw a little wedge in, in part of your life. A family member gets sick, it affects the whole family. Talk to a, a family that has cancer, someone's dealing with cancer. It affects the whole family. Everybody lives in fear because they're gonna die. They're gonna die, but we're all gonna die. Only God knows that perfect day, that day that he's gonna call us home. Remember to accept the things that you can change. Courage to change things that you can't change and give it to God. Ask for wisdom, wisdom knowing the difference. For my entire life, I always heard, be anxious for nothing, but follow it by prayer. The problem I had with any circumstances was always lifted when giving it to God. I've gone through a lot of different ups and downs, but you know, my God has blessed me. He has encouraged me, he has loved me. He has never failed me. He's always been there. So be anxious for nothing. Here shortly, we're gonna read a bunch of verses about don't worry, don't be anxious, because the Bible talks that we shouldn't worry. Turn it to God. Job, Job, Job was touched in such a way that he never gave up on God. He believed to the very end that God would sustain him. In Job 19.25, Job, in all his hardships, says, I know my Redeemer lives, and that in the end, he will stand on the earth. My Redeemer lives. Job had boils and sores and sickness, and he dressed in, in, in cloth. Uh, I mean, he was so sick, he was banded from his own community. In sackcloth, he stood out there in pain. No doctors, nobody to care for him. Yet he never gave up in the faith. Some of us get a hangnail on our toe. We get a yaya on our finger and we say, that's it, God don't love me. That's it, I'm done. We think little things in our life come to destroy us. But you know what, John 10.10, 10, it says that the, that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief comes only to steal and kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. That's Satan. Satan comes to destroy your family, your children. He attacks your job, your workplace, he attacks you in every different way. But the Bible says that he, he comes that we may have life and life abundantly. He wants to be there for you at all times. Thanks to God that we're able to, to, to just be there in all, every situation of life. Because we, we were never promised tomorrow. You and I are not promised tomorrow. 
one of us could die, one of us could get sick, one of us could get hurt on the job, one of us could break a leg or a foot or an ankle, regardless of the situation. If I would cut my finger off, my whole body hurts. When something happens to one of you in the body of Christ, we all hurt. I don't care if it's problems with drugs or alcohol or marriage. When you're hurting, we hurt too. We pray that God will have mercy and help us get through the situation. So for just a moment, because time's getting short, we're going to read a couple verses. So we're going to go a little fast through them. Turn to 1 Peter 5, 7. 1 Peter 5, 7. I hope you have paper and pencil in case we go real fast through it. It says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Jesus says he cares, he loves you, regardless of whatever you're going through. Matthew 6, 34. Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself, and each day has enough trouble of its own. Why worry? God's in control. Psalms, 19, uh, Psalms 94, 19. I sure hope you have paper and pencils. If you need some, they're glad to have them. Psalms 94, 19. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. Imagine if we didn't have Jesus Christ in our heart. Imagine if there wasn't somebody to, who could comfort us in our problems, in our needs, in our worries. We all going to have situations, but God's there to console with us. John 14, 1. John 14, 1. Do not let your heart be troubled, but trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He wants us to trust him. Mercy, why are you worried about the little things? It says, don't worry, be happy, even in the little things. John 14, 27. The peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Don't be afraid what tomorrow holds. I have a family member dying of cancer in the hospice. And mom says that he's afraid to, to go to sleep. He's afraid he's never going to wake up again. He wants to sleep with his eyes open because he's afraid. We've already gave him the plan of salvation, he have already accepted Jesus Christ. But how many of you guys would be afraid to die if you knew you were dying? This tells us, do not let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. We shouldn't be afraid of death. We should be afraid of sickness. We should be afraid when we're accused of things we haven't been done. Let us go to Proverbs 25, 12, 25. Proverbs Chapter 12, 25. An anxious heart weighs a man down, but kind words cheer him up. Did you know worries? If you went to bed worried, it makes a rough night. You toss, you turn. You can't sleep comfortable. Sometimes you can't even sleep at all. But turn it over to God. He has it under control. You can't change what has happened. You can't change a future when it's in God's hands. Psalms 38, 9. Psalms 38, 9. All my longings lie open before you, O Lord. My side is hidden from you. I mean, sometimes we just have to turn it to God and say, Lord, <laughs> it's, it's all yours. Ecclesiastics 1, 18. Ecclesiastic 1, 18. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow. For more knowledge, the more grief. I mean, when you work, some jobs aren't easy. In order to earn that check, you have to work. Sometimes it's sweat, sometimes it's blood, sometimes it's your whole heart. But in order to receive that check, you have to work to get paid. And Christ is telling us as Christians, we have to work 
We have to be part of the ministry. We got to get involved because he, he longs for us to do his will. Luke chapter 12, 22 through 23. Then Jesus said to his di disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what your body, about your body, or what you wear. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. With this little story, reminds me that God takes care of the birds and the animals out there. They neither sow, they neither reap. He takes care of all the animals. How much more is he not going to take care of you? Not to worry. He's going to take care of you, regardless of your situation. 2 Corinthians 9 8. 2 Corinthians 9 8, if you have a Bible. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. God is going to bless you. He is going to meet your needs when you turn over to him. Say, okay, Lord, I can't do it no more. I can't see a light at the other tunnel. It's all in your hands. He's there, ready to calm the storm. He can calm the seas. He can calm the winds. He can calm your problems. Mark 13, 11. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we are accused of different things. We are we're put on trial. We were judged. And the Bible says, don't worry. Be happy. He is going to use your mouth, your words, to inspire you with the thing, the right things to say. I don't know how many have ever gone in front of a judge or courtroom. It's scary. It's difficult. I don't care if it's a speeding ticket. First time I got a speeding ticket, I, I was so afraid. I let my sister, my younger sister, go pay it. I was afraid. I didn't know the judge. I, didn't, I know all the judges now in this community. I've learned that they're human beings like you and I. There is just judges and there are bad judges. It depends. What God, we pray for our politicians, for our judges, our law, lawmakers, because we have to abide under the law. And we have to worry, not what they say, but what God says. So allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life when you're in any situation that you're in. We're going to Matthew 13, 22. Matthew 13, 22. The one who receives the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. I still go back to that scripture. What does it profit if a man gain the whole world but loses his own soul? Don't try to, don't be greedy. Don't, don't want what your neighbors have. Don't do what you can and let God do the rest. Allow God to use you in your ministry, in your work, in your job. That in even the words that you encourage others, let God use you. Luke 12, 24. Luke 12, 24. We've got two more and we'll be able to go on. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or a barn, yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you to God? You are a valuable person to God. He knows what you're going through. He's going to take care of you. He's going to help you. He's going to bless you. But you have to allow him to work in your life, in your family, in your homes. Philippians chapter 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God. Next time you're worried, next time you're in your bed tossing because you can't sleep, it's the best time to pray on and call upon God. God, I turn it over to you. It's in your hands. I can't do nothing about it, but you can. Our last one tonight, Isaiah 41.10. 
Isaiah 41, 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen, I will help you, I will uphold you with righteousness in my right hand. Tonight I tell you, don't worry, be happy. God's at your side. God loves you. God cares for you. He's ready to help you. So please, I encourage you, help somebody, encourage somebody. Did you know a smile is as contagious as a yawn? How many have ever yawned and saw someone else yawn? A smile is contagious. So I say, don't worry, be happy. When you see someone, smile and see if they don't smile back. Love them and see if they don't love back. I encourage you tonight. Don't worry, be happy. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Louis. God bless you all. Amen. <clears throat> Whoa, that's loud. Whew. Okay, you guys ready for the second service? No, I'm just kidding. Let's give God a hand, man, because thank God for it. We're able to um, come fellowship, man, because it's just a blessing. You know, God is so good. He's such a giving God. You know, I was reading earlier today, you know, John 3, 16, of course, we all know it. God gave his only son. How awesome is that? Who's going to give up your first burn? Burn. <laughs> Born. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, man, it's been a long day. <clears throat> but God is just so good. He loves us that much. He, he died on the cross for our sins. He has mercy for us. He's forgiving. Because, man, there's sometimes we can't even forgive ourselves. But uh, before I go any further, I just want to ask the ushers to go ahead and pass the envelopes while I continue to make announcements. And I wanted to read a scripture before I continued on. It's in Acts 20, 35. And it says, it reads like this, uh, 2035. It says, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, <coughs> excuse me, it is more, it's more blessed to give than receive. And that's not just talking about giving and and right away expecting back. We've got to give up our time, our effort, our our ear. We have a brother or sister in Christ that that's going through something. We have to listen. You know, God wants us to get, not just to give our, our tithes and offerings to church to help to further the work of God. Because, you know, it's not used for self-gain. It's used for the word of God. We're not here for self-gain. The only place we should be for self-gain is at the gym when we're lifting up those weights that we don't want to lift. You know, or whatever. That's that's punishment. But you know what? Them burgers taste pretty good. But you know what? That's what it's for, for the work of God, you know, not for anything else. So if, you know, the others just pass out envelopes, and if there's anybody out there, not here or there, that want to give online, there's an app for that also. You know, then I also want, I want to share about salvation, you know, it's very important, you know, but we know who's first in our lives. It's not our wives, not our children, not our jobs, not ourselves. It's not nothing else, our cool cars. It's Jesus Christ. Because if we don't make him first, our, our lives are going to go timber like that big old tree in the forest that makes a lot of noise. Because when we fall, we're going to make some noise, and we might not get up. But you know what? When we do fall... Even in our walk with God, like Danny said, you know, Christ forgives us. He picks us up. So you know what? If you make that choice to accept Jesus Christ, you know what? Just continue serving God. You know, it's not people say, oh, you think you're good because you're a Christian. No, we have to seek God every day. It's tough. It's a tough world. You're going to get attacked. You're going to get kicked. But you know what? As long as you have that destination in front of you, up in the sky, you, see Jesus, you seek Jesus Christ. Man, if they want to kick you, let them kick you when you're down. You get right back up. Then I have a few announcements here. 
We're going to have baptismals July 25th, and uh, the ushers have some envelopes, some, envelope, some uh, papers back there, what you need, what you need for baptismal. We're going to have baptismal class, July, uh, this is for baptismal class information, it's on this paper, but we're going to have baptismals July 25th and baby dedications. So anybody that wants to get baptized or knows somebody that wants to get baptized, get one of these papers from the ushers. And on the second page, right there, there's a plea that they need to fill out, write out how they want their names to come out on the baptismal, and get them handed in as soon as possible. And whoever already picks them up, please hand them in soon. So we can know how many people, how many certificates and stuff we have to write out. And then also, coming up this month at Pastor Danny's house on the 23rd at 6 p.m., he's going to have a fellowship at his house for about 10 people because he has a small living room there at his house. He wants to have a, six, a fellowship at his house, 6 p.m. So if you want to um, come join him for Bible of a fellowship, he's going to have the paper on Sunday. So fill out the, let him know on Sunday that you want to join him for a fellowship at his house on the 23rd at 6 p.m. So, and then also we still have prayer every single day, 7, 12, 5. You know, I, I really encourage you, man, because as crazy as our lives are, we got to make time for God. I know it's, it's tough, you know, because we have to work. You know, I'm saying, you know, quit your job and come to pray. But you know what? If you can make it in the morning, in the lunch hour, in the evening, you know, or even come early to church, there's a prayer room there. Close the door. Close the door. Go pray. You want to pray with somebody? Pray with them. Or you want to pray for somebody, you know, not just here, but go out to your family members. You know, if your family members are sick, pray with them, even if it's over the phone. You know, instead, even if it's at the gym. The other day we were praying at the gym. You know, we, we live in a free country. Jesus Christ delivered us from evil. Why can't we spread God's love with others? So before I close, I'm going to pray for the offering. Then I'll close in prayer for this evening. And you guys just... Uh, Remember how important it is to put Jesus Christ first. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for today, God. Whew, thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins, God. I thank you for this offering that we're about to receive, God, for, for your work, God, for nothing else but for your work. And I thank you for blessing us so we could bless others and give to help others and not just only ourselves, Lord Jesus. And also, again, God, I want to Thank you for this evening, this time of fellowship for today. I thank you for this beautiful day and this rain, this water, this moisture you give us, God. And I do want to lift up those family members that have were in accidents today and uh, pray for comfort for all those families, God. Lift them up to you. I just thank you, God, for every single individual here and every single person that couldn't make it. I pray for traveling mercy and I pray for their evening, their day. But I pray, God, that no matter what they're going through, because everybody has their own different situations in life, no matter what it is, God, I just pray that comfort, that give them comfort, but they seek you first in your name. I just love you, and I praise you, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Good night. God bless you guys.